Dunbar. Terry, you get the, the easy shift. Wade McLeod and I did seven hours straight oh, of a wrestling yeah. tournament on Saturday. So this is just a quick little high school basketball game. Wow. <laughs> Coach McLeod, he's a warrior. <laughs> Tell you, I've had the great fortune of meeting his son, Quinn, yeah, this week. Yeah, my son's Last class, week, and yeah. your, your three sons. And, boy, he's, he's really a great kid. Coach McLeod and your wife, you, you've done a great job raising him. He's an awfully great kid. This is the Muscatine Power and Water pregame show. It's Davenport North in town tonight as the boys face off. The Wildcats come in 10-4 and four overall, 9-2 and two in the conference. Their last time out, just a five-point loss to the number two ranked team in Class 4A, Pleasant Valley. The Muskies coming in 1-13 overall, 1-11 in the conference. And uh, missing a starter, Dante Lee tonight. He's out with a, with an illness. Um, so we won't have Dante Lee in his 9.6 points per game. But the Muskies are led in scoring by freshman Luke Wieskamp, the 6'5 freshman, at 9.8 points per game. And Sam Ember, the junior, who's come on, he was injured the first part of the season, and now he's kind of back to full strength. And he's coming back, and, and Sam averaging 8.4 points per game. We also expect Braden Hufford, who's at 8.8 .8 points per game, to have step in maybe into more of a scoring role tonight. And also, the last couple times out, the sophomore, Darnell Thompson, has come up and, and been a real spark for this Muskie team. Yeah, both Darnell and Don, uh, both Darnell and Sam have really given him a big boost, you know. And like you said, Sam has just continued to get better each week. And, and uh, Darnell the same. Dar Darnell just brings all that energy. You know, it's just very noticeable. When he comes into the game, it just seems that uh, everything, everybody picks up their energy level a notch. And he had 22 points in the, the sophomore game right before this. I don't think he played the entire game. I think that was 22 points sure. in limited action. Now, for the Wildcats, that don't let the score of the Pleasant Valley game deceive you. 31-27 was the far. 32-27 was that final score. But that had more to do, I think, with the style than it really does the aptitude of this Wildcat team. Three scorers in double figures led by Mike Lowry, the senior guard, 6'1 guard, averaging 15.7 points per game. And then Kyle Lamonte averaging 13.5 points per game. And he's just a 6'3 sophomore. And then senior Kate Quinn, a 6'5 forward who's at 10.4 points per game. So three double-digit scorers on this North team. And they can get up and down and they can do a lot when they've got the ball in their hands. Yeah, as a coach, you, you know, if you can get three guys in double figures, you love that balance, you know, and that's really a big key. A lot of times teams can get two, but, well, if you can get a third double-figure score in there, you're really tough tough to guard. Um, and Kyle is the son of assistant coach Kyle Lamont Sr. Kyle was a tremendous player at both Davenport Central and Davenport North, and uh, I haven't seen Kyle play much other than in junior high, so I'm really anxious to watch him play. And first-year coach Marquez Davis is doing an outstanding job uh, at the Wildcat helm, and... Uh, it's great to see guys who, who have played at these schools and able to come back to their alma mater and have such success. You know, you really, you really, you really tip your hat to them. You know, and we're seeing that in the, in the Davenport Public Schools. We're seeing it more and more in the bigger metro areas in our state. Players coming back, really treating it more like a vocation than a profession, and really trying to keep kids into the program as we've seen attendance and participation numbers dwindle throughout activities statewide. It's great to see these coaches coming in and energizing programs. Absolutely. We'll have our starters here in just a second, presented by Bear of Muscatine. This is the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Stay tuned at halftime as we will have the next level basketball, travel basketball program, sixth grade team will be scrimmaging at halftime. So it's a Tuesday night game. It's, the, it's really the warm up for us. It's the big one, it's Friday. Double header. Central DeWitt in town cake auction night, Terry. We've got Coach, the three Coach Long is sick right now. We've got to get him healthy. He's yeah. missed the last two days, so hopefully he gets better, better for Friday. We mentioned the injury to Dante Lee for the Muskies, or the, the illness for Dante Lee, and he's not playing tonight. Uh, another injury for North, Nolan Mosier, their junior forward, a 6'6 forward who's a tremendous athlete. He's the quarterback on their football team. And a, you know, Division two level, maybe low Division one quarterback, uh, he's unavailable. So that's a big body, 6'6", 230, unavailable for the Wildcats. But starting off, they'll have number one, Mike Lowry, the senior guard. Number 15, Kyle Lamont is the next starter for the Wildcats. And then 21, George Rucker, a 6'3", senior. 
6'5", senior Cade Gwynn. And then number 32, uh, or excuse me, number 20, is that 35 that's down there too? Uh, looks like three, Joel. Got it. Little number three, James Porter, a senior. James Porter also there. Starting for the Muskies, number one, Braden Hufford, the senior guard. And number 10, Sam Emmert, the junior guard. The number 15, Luke Wieskamp. Getting the start. Again, the leading scorer for the Muskies. And then Diamond Crahey getting the start tonight, the 6'4 junior. And then senior, 5'8 junior, Miles, or senior, Miles Melendez will be your starters. That is the bear of Muscatine starting lineups. And now we're going to rise and honor America with the national anthem. As we are ready to get underway here, it is tip-off time. This has been our pregame show presented by Muscatine Power and Water. Joel, it feels like we haven't been together for a I while. Know, the Muscatine man. guys have been on the road for so long. We had a week off there as the girls had three home games last week as they had a makeup game in there. I'm sure the boys are happy to be home again. Yeah, it's kind of that trading off schedule. The prior week, the boys were home all week, and then the girls were on the road. And then they'll be together on Friday as Central DeWitt comes to town. Gwynn will tip off against Luke Wieskamp. One thing you look at the just the sheer anatomy of the situation. North long at every position. 6'2", 6'3", the shortest player on the floor is six feet tall. And as a coach boy, you love that length. Oh, that makes a world of difference. Porter will bring it up for the Wildcats. On the wing is Rucker. This is Lowry. Inside to Gwynn. Kicks it out to Rucker for three. Big three-point bucket. That's George Rucker. It's a nice kick out by the big fella there for a three, and North gets set or set in their press now. Rucker has surpassed his average, just 2.1 points per game. Wow. He's got three with the first bucket. Man-to-man -man defense for the Wildcats. Melendez picks up his dribble, now finds Hufford. Cray in the short corner. Muscatine's being very patient here on his first possession, trying to get a good shot. Rucker doing a nice job closing when Wieskamp's got a look. And the pass is stolen now by Porter. North will set their offense. Muscatine playing man-to-man -man defense as well. Lowry for three. Good looking shot there. 
from the junior, or from the senior. Two threes to start off for North, Joel. You know, North looks like they're a lot more deliberate in the half-court office. They're not playing that helter-skelter like we saw Davenport West and some of the other teams we faced this year. Stolen by Gwynn. And now here's the run out. And Davis. Or excuse me, Lamont. Unfortunately, Joel, you know, a lot of times those turnovers turn into run out points. And that's exactly what happened in that last possession. Really good outlet pass it by really, Gwynn. It was. He saw the floor and got the ball to the right player. Emmert on the wing. Muscatine just can't panic at this point, Joel. Still early in the game. Just got to settle down a little bit. Take care of the basketball. These camp drives left. This guy got to travel, I think, Joel. They called the travel. Yep. It was kind of a weak whistle, but you know, I think he did travel. He lost his footing yep. as he drove to the basket there. And yeah, North looks like I say, Joel. I just feel like they look very deliberate. They look like they good execution team in the half court offense. They don't look like they're in a rush. Very patient, kind of look like they know what they want. Linda's got a deflection there. But Lowry able to get the ball back. Dive in the post Lowry for the basket. For three. Just a Wait. smooth shot from the senior. And Coach Torelli wants a timeout. It's a 30 second, we'll keep it right here. I think that's a good timeout, for Joel. North opens up on an 11 0 run in the first minute, two, two minutes and 10 seconds here. You know, they look like they do a nice job. They look inside. They dove the post to the, to the basket, but then they had a nice kick out to the wing here and put that pressure on the basket inside, and, you know, it opens up that three-pointer on the outside. And they're, they're shooting the ball well. Yeah, and active hands on defense. They've, they've stolen two passes and been smart with the ball. You know, if you're Muscatine here, well, we just can't panic. You know, again, the first quarter, there's so much game left. You just can't panic. You've got to just stay with it. you just got to try to settle down. And, that's why I think it was a good timeout by Coach Torelli. Just kind of settle the kids down, see if we get, get a good shot here on offense and uh, tighten up a little bit on the defensive end. And now some full court pressure here from the Wildcats. Rucker deflects that out of bounds. Trying to really pressure, deny that inbounds pass. Emmert. Looks like Bring they back up, off then after that, after that initial denial. Melendez lost his dribble. Ooh, that could have been a double dribble. That yeah. should have been a double dribble. As you said, they missed that one. Crahey. They're calling a jump ball. Interesting. Thought he pointed at the floor, and I thought he was going <laughs> to call, call the foul. foul also. Yeah. Inbound to Wieskamp. Tough pass. Crahey able to secure it, but active hands still from the Wildcats. Now Emmert has his shot blocked by Gwynn. We just haven't been able to get anything going offensively, Joel. Hufford for three. Big three-pointer by Braden Hufford from First National Bank of Muscatine. Sometimes, Joel, just getting that first shot to go down settles things down a little bit. You get your, you get your wits about you. Every Muscatine three-pointer all season long garners a $25 donation to the Muskie Booster Club from First National Bank of Muscatine. And another three. That's three for three for Lowry. From behind the arc, he's got quick nine, and it's 14-3 is the lead. That pass stolen. Up to Lamont. Reverse layup, good. Well, again, turnovers leading to run out points for North. We just got to take better care of the basketball. It's really tough when you try to throw across your body cross court like that. The defense can read that. Too much air time on that pass. Got to make shorter, crisper passes against a team like this. And Hufford calls for the walk. He's got a little pivot foot drag right behind him. Yeah. Just got to be a little more sure of himself on that. He drove in, in there nicely, and I think maybe 
give Di uh, Diamond a little look on that roll. I thought there was a, just a crease, a little window there where he could have maybe got the ball to Diamond on the roll for a little layup there, but easier for me to say up here than it is down there. <laughs> I, I realize that if you're... If, these guys, you know, they're on the floor, and it's tougher to see things. Kyron McNulty into the game here for the Wildcats. He's in for Porter. Also, Dennis and Franklin in. Diamond Crahey, I think, is going to pick yeah. up his first foul. Definitely grabbed him, but it was certainly before the shot. I think Diamond just felt he had no other op option there. You yeah. know, the guy was going to lay it in, and rather than give up the two points, he, early on he took the foul. First foul of the night on either team as Gwynn catches the inbound. Now Gwynn backs in. No good. They're going to call a foul, foul thing on and, Melendez yeah. here. Got him on the arm. I don't. I can't believe they're not shooting on that. I thought he was sh shooting the ball, but I guess not. Gwynn catches the lob, and he has a strong finish there. And after the made basket, we see this. It's not a. It's a. It's a challenge the inbound, and then we're then we kind of yeah, back off back and let them be man to man defense. And they almost their pressure looks more controlled. It's not real, you know, helter skelter. And when they, you see when you see a player in the trap zone, they they hit it, but it's not. It's not your t classic trap. I think they're just trying to speed tempo up and see if you'll turn it over on your own. Wieskamp with the jumper. 13-point lead here for the Wildcats as Gwynn runs the rim and he's able to get the bucket. Good rim run there by Gwynn. As a coach, you love to see that. And, then, and then you love to see guards reward the big man when he runs like that. That was a beautiful pass over the top. You don't Kids don't see the floor often in that, and that was a great pass. Melendez brings it up. This is Emmert on the wing. Offensive foul called on Melendez. That's his second foul. You know, you don't often see many calls on, on offensive screens, but it, it happens occasionally. But you know what? As a, as a coach, I'd rather see kids set good, hard screens. Yeah. You'll, you'll, live with a, you'll live with a foul once in a while. And the Muskies with a, a limited bench tonight. Stolen by Crahey. Up to Hufford. Melendez gets the offensive rebound. Three-pointer by Hufford. No good. Wieskamp battling for the rebound. But Lamont able to come down with it. Fifty seconds to go in the first quarter. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound by Gwynn. And another foul called. I don't know if it's me, Joel, but it's I'm not hearing, soft I'm not hearing the whistles real clearly. Yeah, no, They're real soft. The, yeah. It's almost hesitant, you know, and they always talk about officials. Be emphatic in your yeah. calls, you know. Um, I know I'm getting old and my hearing's not the best, but and I'm not doubting it was no. a foul. I think it was a good call. Yeah, yes. But it just, it, you just, you know. First free throw, no good. Caleb Bettis checks in along with Connor Christensen as Melendez and Crahey will take a break. Melendez with two fouls here. That's the first foul on Luke Wieskamp. Gwynn makes the second free throw. 16 point lead, 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, their pressure's kind of odd. The guy doesn't even guard the inbounder very hard. He just kind of stands in the middle, but it's just a different type of press. Sam Emmert with the drive and lay in. Very nice job of Sam getting to the rim on that. You know, against pressure, you got to do that. You got to take the ball to the basket a little bit to you know get some of that pressure off. You loosen it up a little bit. As a, as a Brian, I'd like to see Sam do that more often. Yeah. He's he's shown night in night out. He's got yeah, that skill set. And I'm sure the coaches have talked to him about that. You know, encouraged him to do it. Lowry called for the walk. I think that was a good call. I know Lowry didn't think he traveled, but I think he did. And I always tell kids. If it looks funny, you know, right. a lot of times they're going right. to call it, you know. And this Euro step, a lot of times you get called for it on that too because it looks odd and it just doesn't look right. Emmert pushes. Two seconds. What do we got and they're there? They're calling a carry. Wow. 
Well, Joel, he's listening to you. He, do, he, he took the ball to the yeah. basket like you had asked he or like you wanted, and, but unfortunately they called him for a carry. That was kind of an odd call. And then a deep pass. Boy, Not touched, so now it'll be, be our ball, ball down there, yes. on the, on the underneath that basket because the ball was never secured in possession. That's a big break for Muscatine. Yes. Maybe we can get a basket here with 1.4. We've run some great out-of-bounds yes. plays this year. I've really been impressed with coaches out-of-bounds plays and the kids' execution. So let's see if we can get one here. That back screen, up screen. Look, nice job, Caleb. Bettis Beautiful. hits the bucket at the buzzer. Outstanding. Screen for the screener, and he had a wide open look. Tremendous execution. So the Muskies get the bucket. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more Muskie basketball. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. Introducing hy V Plus. Get a hy V Plus premium membership for just $99 a year and get fuel savings every time you shop. Plus, our Redline Hotline. Plus, free online delivery and free express pickup. Plus, a personal online shopper. Plus, exclusive offers every month. Right now, get 20% off floral, party trays, and DSW at hy V. Plus, a free bouquet with hy V Plus. And welcome back to Muscatine High School. It's the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar, along with my partner, Hall of Fame coach, Terry Youngbauer. Joel, that was a big basket there. That was. The court for Muscatine. Great execution. Caleb Bettis set a great screen and, and got a wide open layup. He was rewarded. And you know, you tell kids all the time, how do you get open? Set a good screen for somebody else. And Caleb, Caleb did a great job there. Great pass by the inbounder as well. The same five on the floor that finished the first quarter for the Muskies. This is Amari Wright for the Wildcats. It's Kyron McNulty. Gets it back. This is Wright. And another foul. Boy, again, I just barely hear that whistle. Yeah. Barely. No. Five team fouls on the Muskies, zero team fouls on the Wildcats. Dennison for Franklin for three. Dennison Franklin, he hits it. The 6 4 forward. They like that diamond press. Looks like they're matching up man in the back end of it, too. And like you say, they just back off and play, play a little pressure, token pressure. And that's a, an, an errant pass. You know, as a player, you, you, you want to caution kids to jump in the air because yep. a lot of bad things happen. And Sam or uh, Braden got caught jumping in the air there. And I remember some college coaches who used to say, "If you jump in the air, I'm going to strangle you." I just remember Herb, Co Herb Coningsworth from Mason City <laughs> used to always say that. But yeah, a lot of times you try to teach kids to stay on the floor with your feet. When you jump, you know you're caught in the air. You just got to get rid of the ball, and sometimes bad things happen. That was the perk of having no vertical. You just, it never yeah, happened. There you me. go. There you go. <laughs> As the lay in. Nice post entry there from North. Mark Holloway, the senior. So we're seeing some fresh bodies here for the Wildcats. As Sam Emmert brings it up for the Muskies. Has it deflected. Offered for three. No good. And it's going to be out of bounds. It'll stay with the Muskies. As Kyron McNulty just unable to keep his toe off the line. As both he and Luke Wieskamp were hustling for that rebound. Let's see if the Muskies can have similar execution. A little tougher angle to inbound from here. Yeah, I always hated it in that deep corner. There's not much you can run there. Just try to get the ball inbound successfully, which Muscatine did. Connor Christensen flashes to the lane, misses the lay-in. And now North will push. Elijah Hinton misses the shot. Emmer gets the rebound. The 
Mario Wright. Tough defense. Three pointer by Wieskamp, no good. Well, we got a lot of bodies falling all over the place. Getting Franklin on the wing, slows it up, getting, resets the O. Getting physical out there. Three-pointer, no good. Sam Emmert battling for the rebound. And that foul is going to go on Mark Holloway. His first. First team foul on the Wildcats. 5.25 to go here in the second quarter. 17 point lead. Offert will bring it up for the Muskies. James Porter back into the game here for North. Porter the lone starter on the floor for the Wildcats. Backdoor cut, anticipated by Holloway. And now he's going to try to go coast to coast. No call, because Darnell Thompson is trying to take the charge. I think that was a good no call. Bettis, right look there by Humphrey, just a little bit out of the outstretched arms of Bettis there. Yeah, if he could have gotten the ball, I think Caleb would have had another basket there. Caleb did a nice job that running was a good the floor. Run, yep. Really rim to rim, as you, as you like to teach your big guys. Thompson, Hufford, Bettis, Christensen, and Wieskamp on the floor for the Muskies. Well, I like the job Caleb did there. Oops, sorry, guys. I like the job Caleb did there just going straight up, uh, Joel, and, and you know did not foul and made a tough shot out of that. Wieskamp for three. Led to a nice Muscatine possession on the other end as well. That's the first National Bank of Muscatine three-pointer. Good finish by Porter. Connor Christensen, shot fake, and he'll go to the free throw line for two. As Holloway got him. I like the job Braden did there against the press. Looked ahead and the guy found the guy open. That's what you got to do. Throw the ball ahead when you have players open. And Connor was very patient there with the shot fake. Got himself to the free throw line. Substitutions preparing to come in here as Connor Christensen will shoot two free throws. And he gets the shooter's roll. This is good, Joe. Gets us to the line. We catch our breath a little bit here. Maybe cut into this lead a little bit at the line. Emmert and Crahey check in. Wieskamp and Bettis will get a break. Lowry checks back in for the Wildcats. Excuse me, no. Lamont checks back in for the Wildcats. Along with Gwynn. Big fella Gwynn, yeah, I've been impressed with him. Here's Porter. Gets the screen from Gwynn. Looking for the roll. Rucker back into the game also for the Wildcats. One of the things I've been impressed with, Joel, early on in this first half is North's passing. They pass very crisply, and they see the open guy. I like the way they get the ball inside of the big fella, too. Gwynn on the turnaround. He's going to get the and one, and he'll go to the free throw line. Boy, they called that one on the floor, Joel. All right, never mind. I thought okay. that he was signaling... I, I, the basket. I'll be there honest, I, I thought it was a, a basket too. So now it's a one and one. So they'll okay. still get a chance at the free throw line. Muscatine Sports presented by Rivo Plumbing and Heating and Riots and Rebels Salon in Muscatine. We're going to have to try not to foul the rest of the half, Joel, with them in the bonus. We don't want to put them at the free throw line. Missed the front end. Darnell Thompson gets the rebound. And now Hufford finds Emmer on the wing. Sam gets into the lane. Contested shot blocked by Gwynn. 
That's tough sledding with 6'3", Lamont, and 6'5", yeah. Gwynn, as Lamont gets to the rim. We just haven't had many clean looks tonight, you know. The, the couple that we've gotten, we've knocked down, but we, we haven't had, everything's challenged. The lead stays at 17 with 2.40 to go, 2.45 to go in the first half. East Camp set to check back in for the Muskies. This is Darnell Thompson, had 22 points in the sophomore game. Been seeing a lot of varsity action as well. Now Thompson going to get called for the travel. Took a little skip. Now Connor Christensen will check out as Luke Wieskamp checks back in. Rucker works it around the wing. Here's Porter. Lowry for three. That's good. I don't think he's hit the rim all night. I was just going to say, Joel, <laughs> that thing dropped through so clean. <laughs> he's got 12 on four shots. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's, a, uh, that's good efficiency. Absolutely. He's I'm, really shooting the ball well. I'm not a math scholar, but... As a team, they've shot tremendously from the three-point line. Hufford hits the big three, his second of the night, the first National Bank of Muscatine. And that's, that's the ticket for Muscatine getting back into that. They can hit some threes. Here's Rucker on the wing. Inside to Gwynn. Triple team that time. No good. Wing gets the board, and now he's fouled by Bettis. Well, you got to hand it to Gwynn there. He was triple teamed, missed the shot, and still got the, his own rebound. You know, and he's not just a, a long player who looks like he's got some pretty good leaping ability, too. He's got a good feel for body positioning, too. Like he, he knows how to work his hip into the, into the defender and find the right position. Yeah, he posts real strong, and he's done a nice job scoring, but also kicking the ball out to three-point shooters as well. He sort of—he looks like he has a good feel for the yeah. game. And he, and he battles for position on rebounds without using his arms, so he, he escapes foul trouble. As he makes the second free throw, missed the first. He's got six. Hufford catches the pass from Wieskamp. Here's Thompson in the corner. Thompson trying to find Bettis in the post, but Porter digs it out. Wieskamp with the block shot. Great job by Luke not giving up on that play. But Hufford used his dribble to control the ball, so he smartly finds a teammate. And now here's Emmert on the wing. 38 seconds. Lamont going to get called for the foul. It's called for the reach in, trying to dig out the steal. Hufford gets the inbound. Hufford with the step back. Or excuse me, that was Emmert with the step back. Wieskamp with the rebound. Now Bettis shot blocked by Rucker. 20 seconds to go here in the second quarter. Emmert finds Hufford. Lowry defending Wieskamp. And that's going to be... Boy, that sure looked like a North guy touched that. Yeah. He didn't pass, but... I thought Kyle Eight. Lamont got a hand on that, but perhaps not. 8.7 seconds. As Rucker picks it up. Finds Rucker in the corner. Three-pointer, no good. Rebound, Gwynn. Put back, no good. Bettis gets the rebound, and that'll be the time for the first half. We're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with your Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show and your next level basketball. Actually, we're going to stay right here as the next level uh, travel basketball program, their sixth grade team, is going to be announced. We're going to... Keep it right here. And again, we just had this 
couple weeks ago. Now we're going to turn it over to PA announcer Roger Bates. Got our sixth grade team here, coached by Mike Wiley and Cody Staker. Getting the tip, this is Parker Struff, number 15 in white. He gets it over to 33, Tate Staker. Inside shot, no good. Boy, that was a great post after Joel. You don't often see that at this level. Carter Nielsen, this is Preston Schroeder on the runner. Been seeing a lot from his sisters on the varsity girls team. That three pointer banked in good. That was number 20, and I I don't have a number 20 on my roster. I, I think he called that, that, that shot. Been, he called that bank. That might have been Gabe Roth. It's just good to see these kids out here. This again, this is the sixth grade team here for next level Muskies. That was Gabe Roth on the shot. Well, he Pre likes the backboard. Preston Schroeder gets the rebound. Schroeder, no good. DJ Knox knocks it out of bounds. I like the intensity these kids are playing with. Getting their opportunity and they're making the most of it. Bars finds Schroeder on the inbound and he misses. Now this is Emmanuel Galan on the run out. Knox for three. No good. Rebound by Roth. Nice box out by 21 there. Nice rebound. All the way to the basket, young fella. Knox looking for Emmanuel Galan there. Joel, I really like the way these kids are getting up and down the floor. They're really pushing the ball. And Mike Wiley and Cody Staker, these coaches. Doing a great job with the kids. The Staker name, if you follow coaching in the state of Iowa, well known. Cody's father was a longtime football coach at Coe College and high school coach in the state. And his brother is the current head coach at Coe College for the football program. Great Rose ball. for three, no ball good. There. That's rebounded by Riley Beber. Now this is Tate Staker, finds Knox up the floor. Excuse me, no, that's Parker Struth with the finish. Wow, great job seeing the court from that young, young man and making a great pass for a layup. Great finish. Roth to Schroeder. This is Roth. That's Gabe Roth. And that's Silas Bars with the putback. Now a line change. <laughs> we got some subs coming in. I see Coach Brad Roth over there as well. Lots of lots of parents helping out to keep these programs going. That's great to see. That's uh, Sam Roth with the fall away. 20 with another basket. Carter Nielsen with the jumper, no good. Rebounded by Galan. Staker with the shot fake, now the drive. Emmanuel Galan with the jumper, no good. Rebound, put back. As Nielsen gets the offensive board and the put back. <laughs> the eighth grade boys in front of us really <laughs> like that. They must know him pretty well. That was a nice rebound and put back. Got a, by the way, got a great group of our eighth graders in front of us watching this game, Joel. Great kids. Yeah, and they got a chance to be on the floor last week yes. as they were introduced. Yes. I know you guys had a big showdown the other night. We did. As a had a, some real nice wins up at Bettendorf. 
Well, and you had the unofficial Muskie versus Muskies. Oh, game that game well, too. Yeah. Yes. We can talk about that Friday because Coach Long will be with us. Yes, he'll he'll yes. want to brag about that. You know? I, I heard that he, he got the he got the W. He'll want to brag. We'll Preston let him talk a little Schroeder about Schroeder with the reverse wow. layup. Great footwork there by Preston Schroeder. Didn't fall for him, but that was really a nice move. What's also really good is I, he's what? Won. Great look has gone on the cut. What a great pass from Carter Nielsen. I've Great cut in the basket. I've not seen a lot of these kids play basketball. I've coached them in football and baseball. Okay. Because I have a son who's close to this age. And uh, it's fun to see these kids play another sport. Boy, they're doing a great job. I love the passing. I'm, I'm impressed with the ball handling. This is Riley Bever. Movement. You know, a lot of times kids stand around. These kids are moving very well without the ball. Cutler Bell. Great post pass. Gets it inside to Preston Schroeder. And he gets the lay in. Tremendous shot. Tate Staker will bring it up for the white team. Nielsen, jumper no good. That's rebounded by Gavin Burton, number 25. Just good understanding of where to go with the ball. Absolutely. I, I, I'm very impressed. Staker for three. No good. Battling Pass. for rebounds. Rebound by Roth. Pushing the ball. Looking ahead. That three-pointer is good. Wow. Pull-up three. Wow. Great Sam shot. Sam Roth. He's feeling it, Joel. E.J. Knox brings it up for the white team. This is Nielsen. Peyton Struff now. Joel, you're doing a great job with the names here. So you know a lot of these kids. Huh? I, I've got the, yeah. Okay. I, I coach an 11U baseball okay. team. A lot of these kids are the 12U kids. But when we do tryouts, I, I evaluate the 12. I okay. evaluate the age up. Okay. And in YSF football, a lot of these kids played okay. uh, with, with our team. Carter Nielsen had that last basket on the other end. What I really like what he did there is he rebounded the ball and kept it up high. Did not bring it down. Yeah. You know, and older kids even struggle with that. <laughs> bring it down and get it stripped, but. He did a great job keeping it above his head, and he put the ball in. Knox. Uh, Knox gets to the lane. Scoop shot, no good. Good look. The Red Sea parted, and he got to the basket. That was great to see. Weber has it stolen by Nielsen. Three-pointer, no good. And now Schroeder will bring it up. And that's going to do it. it for the scrimmage. Tell you what, that was nonstop action, Joel. Oh, well, they had, they Holy had cow. line change substitutions. Maybe that's something we look at in basketball. Should we go to line changes? Forget the scores table and check it in. Just I'm okay just, with that. Just like that. Line like that. that was kind of fun. You got you to really style. be talking and communicating. <laughs> Who you got, you know? Right. Tell you what, these kids did a great job. Great job. So that was the very next level sixth grade Muskies. Very impressed. And we've been really happy to bring you the next level program at halftime throughout this uh, season. And now we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with the second half and more of the Muscatine Lawn and Power Halftime Show. We are looking for a zero turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience. We know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, 
anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf. Mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Getting meals to go from Hy-Vee is even easier with the new Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go website and curbside pickup. Just order online at hyvee.com forward slash mealtime. Feed your family for less and order Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go today. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pro City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory, or maybe you want to book more appointments, or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. Affordable Metal Manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. Affordable Metal Manufacturing. Our business is rolling. Introduce and welcome back. It is the Muscatine Lawn and Power halftime show as we await the beginning of the second half. It's 34 16. The Wildcats leading the Muskies, and it was really just offensive efficiency for North. Muscatine had a few turnovers that turned into runouts and some fast breaks, but it was just offensive possession, they didn't have too many empty ones. Yeah, yeah, North did a great job in their execution. I, I, you know, I was just, like I said, impressed with their passing. Uh, they're very deliberate in what they want to do, uh, get the ball inside, and then you know, kick it out to shooters. And, and uh, like you said, I don't know what their percentage was, Joel, but it had to be very high. They shot tremendous from the yeah. three-point line. Now, as a coach, you're trying to tell your kids, hey, I don't think they can <laughs> they shoot can that well the second. I can't I mean, keep that up. But, you know, uh, strange. Mike, <laughs> Mike Lowry is leading the way scoring for – Davenport North with 12 points, and he's only shot the ball four times. He's four for four from three. And it, it's, it hasn't even really been a rebounding situation where you've been critical of Muscatine's ability to rebound. There really haven't been second chance opportunities because North is just finishing on the first look. As the Muskies get the ball to start the second half, this is Braden Hufford. Luke Wieskamp, Sam Emmer, Diamond Crahey, and Miles Melendez on the floor. Miles Melendez picked up two fouls early in the first quarter. As well did Diamond Crahey have two fouls. Wieskamp defended by Lamont. Here's Porter defending Emmert. Hufford for three. No good. Rebound Crahey. Nice job by Diamond keeping that alive, giving us another possession here. Nice look from Braden. Just couldn't, couldn't get He's the fall. Two for four from three tonight. Okay. Melendez defended by Rucker. Melendez picks his dribble up, finds Crahey. Entry pass to Wieskamp. It's going to go out of bounds, and it'll be North ball. The only thing I don't like about that, too, is Luke was kind of going away from the basket. And I'm not sure even if he caught it, what he could do with it there. So it's one of those where you prefer that the kid on the wing would have just swung the ball to the top, maybe get something on the other side of the floor. Now Lowry will bring it up for the Wildcats.
Nice job by Diamond getting around in the post there. Lamont with the shot fake. He's really bad, battling down there. Rucker, his second three of the game. What I say, Joel, have, they can't keep that three-point shooting up. <laughs> Rucker now a six. He opened the scoring for the whole game with a three, and now he's the first on the board for the Wildcats in the second half. Have they missed one three-pointer? No. Ah, uh, yeah. Just, I think one. They just, just one. one. Yep. As Luke Wieskamp gets to the rim and finishes. Luke's got seven now. Rucker for three. He's heating up. It was set up by a nice drive by Kyle Lamont Jr. and jump stop in the lane and kicked it open to the open shooter. On the 33rd anniversary of Nintendo's Tecmo Bowl, Rucker is doing his best NBA Jam impersonation. Right. And you indicated early on, Joel, he only averages two points a game. <laughs> He's got nine. You don't strike me as a big Nintendo guy back in the day, Terry. No. <laughs> I, I don't know any of those systems, in, you know, these gaming systems. We had to make up games, Joel. We didn't have that, that Fair. good stuff. I guess so that, all, that, so that, that dates me. Yeah. Students. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, there certain, certainly wasn't you know, all that stuff the kids have today, though. As the back, really good back cut there from Lamont and a good feed from Gwynn. You know, you've played at the highest level of college basketball. You've been around this game for a long time. A, a kid like Gwynn, there's a place for him at the next level, isn't there? 6'5", long, has he, some skills. He does a nice job, and as we both talked about, I just think his feel for the game is really good. You know, and, and like you say, he's got good skills. So, yeah, I think he can, he can play. When you think about... You know, obviously, we focus, that tomorrow's National Signing Day for, for football and some other sports. And you think about Division One, people focus so much on Division One. There's so many really good small yeah. college programs, yeah. especially in our geographic area. Right. I mean, and that's where just, I think Wynn would fit in, because like right. you say, he's just a tweener, though, for the, you know, the bigger yeah. levels. I mean, he'd have to guard on the perimeter, and I don't know how quick his feet are, but he does a great job inside. And as you said, he definitely looks like a good small college player. It's just one of those, that's one of my soapboxes, I guess, having gone to a small school. Oh, the ability level some, at those schools is tremendous. You get some oh. gr great educational oh. opportunities and still get to play sports. At a, at Absolutely, a Joel. No, I, I, I think it's great that you plug that. As Hufford misses the three, a good rebound by Melendez. And now Wieskamp for three. Good. First National Bank of Muscatine three-pointer. Wieskamp's got ten now. Cuts the lead to, to 21. Lamont finishes. He's so good at finishing at the rim. Keeps, keeps his chin on the rim, and he just stays strong. What do you think the one-on-one -on -one game is between Dad and I was and just going like? to say, he, he's starting to remind me a little bit of Dad. And, no, he's a fine-looking player, and I'm sure his dad's awful proud of him, rightfully so. And, I'm crazy. Sure, and knowing Kyle, I'll, I'm sure he pushes him like crazy. Kyle's very intense. Uh... Excellent player, but I'm sure he's, and he's an outstanding coach, young coach. Melendez has it deflected out of bounds as Lowry got his hand on it. It'll be musky ball. You can remember to tune in Friday or come on down Friday night. It is Muscatine Musky Booster Club Cake Auction Night. A night at the movie themes Friday, February 4th as the Central DeWitt Sabres will be in town. Oh, and it doesn't get any easier, Joel. Central no. DeWitt's got a fine team as well. Both boys and girls. Yes. Wieskamp gets the block, but Lowry able to get the offensive rebound. I love seeing the effort from Luke. They're not giving up on that play, challenging that shot, turn it into a miss, but unfortunately North had a kid who hustled down and followed that up. As Booker steps on the line. That was, that was almost a fantastic it still was a fantastic play, just toe was on the line. As Booker deflected the pass and tried to get it up to. We might have had some showtime there if that, if that had stayed in. I, I wanted to see it, Joel. <laughs> As the 
Muskies. Miles Melendez inbounds it to Caleb Bettis. Caleb's done some nice things out there tonight. It's nice to see him play well. Had the big bucket at the end of the first yes. quarter. Jumper from Wieskamp. Good mid-range game from Luke. He's very comfortable pulling up at the elbow there. Was strong on that play. Almost a lost art. It truly is, Joel. Everybody wants to dunk it or shoot a three-pointer. Analytics, that'll tell you that's why. Speaking of threes, Lowry, five for five. <laughs> and, and again, five for five and hasn't touched the rim. He's not touched the rim yet. He's been sweet. And that's not hyperbole. Rewind it, no. folks. <laughs> no, you're, you're, you're calling it exactly how it is. Very impressive. I think tonight's his night. He ought to go out and buy a lottery ticket tonight. They're going to call a travel. That's a tough call uh, on Luke there. I don't know. Um, looked like a little contact, yeah. too, but, you know. Chicken or egg thing. What's the, yeah, what's the cause I don't, and effect? I, I don't, yeah, I, right. I, I feel for him, but you just got to keep playing. Yep. Play on. You got to play through those things and those as are, a player. And those are the battles you let your coaches fight. You don't, absolutely, you don't fight them. Absolutely. Got to play on, play through through it. There's a moving screen called from all the way across the, uh, the way. It was the right call. Rucker, it was a really good move, okay. actually. So what he did is he, he pivoted on the screen, but he did a nice job of kind of stepping in and rolled with the screen. So kind of was moving, and it was like a, that arm in a, in a pinball game, just kind of guiding the ball off the wall, and it was it was it was an egregious move. It wasn't a violent move. He just happened to be moving a little too much. But he gained an advantage. Yep. And here's Lowry, and he'll lay it in. Did it touch the rim? I don't think it did. <laughs> he's he's as you described him. He's, he's a very smooth player. Really is. You know, at times, North doesn't even look like they're exuding a ton of energy, you know. And I guess you used the word efficient to describe them. Skip pass to Braden Hufford. He hits that for three. He's got three three-pointers on the night and nine points. That's another First National Bank of Muscatine three-point basket. Rucker misses from the corner. Rebound Gwynn, but Hufford digs it out. Finally. And uh, that probably, I thought he slapped the jumbo, board which I on that, Joel. I that think that's a basket. Yeah. Yeah. When you slap the board like that. And I think this is what Coach Torelli is going to have a conversation. Yeah. He, he definitely slapped the board on that. He challenged the shot. And I believe by rule, I could be wrong. Yeah, I, unless I've it's been changed. out of it for a yeah, while. Right. But, but I think that should be a goaltend, as you indicated, Joel. Unfortunately, I you know as a coach you can plead your case all you want, yeah, and I've never gonna... seen him change a, change a call easy. <laughs> but at least you yeah. you maybe feel better about well, it. You get to tell him, and maybe for the maybe you get the next one. Maybe you get the next one, and two, it shows your players that you're you're in it for them. Absolutely, you're, you're going to you're yes. going to battle yes. for them. Looks like Norris got some more subs in the game, Joel. This is right number twenty three with the ball. Stolen by Emmer. Emmer gets the lay in. The right will bring it up for the Wildcats. Nice job by Sam. McNulty you know, now. Reading that pass and finishing at the other end. Sam's an athletic kid. He can do that. Elijah Hinton now in the game. This is now Dennison Franklin works it over. Franklin. With the three, the rim's out. Christensen on the floor. It's going to be the end of the third quarter. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back with more Muskie basketball. Affordable metal manufacturing provides cut-to-length rolled metal panels for commercial, residential, and agricultural roofing. We take pride in delivering our products with a short lead time, normally three days or less. Our panels are cut to the nearest eighth of an inch for greater efficiency and less waste. Affordable Metal can even roll your panels on site. Call today for a free quote and let us become your preferred supplier. 
affordable metal manufacturing. Our business is rolling. Introducing hy V Plus. Get a hy V Plus premium membership for just $99 a year and get fuel savings every time you shop. Plus, our Redline Hotline. Plus, free online delivery and free express pickup. Plus, a personal online shopper. Plus, exclusive offers every month. Right now, get 20% off floral, party trays, and DSW at hy V. Plus, a free bouquet. With hy V Plus, our plus really does equal more. Sign up today. And welcome back to the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. I'm Joel Krausar, along with my partner Terry Youngbauer, as Davenport North leads 51-28 at the beginning of the fourth quarter. You know, Joel, we're down 23, but you got to keep playing. And, you you know, I don't know if, if it's possible to come back from this deficit, but you got to play for the next game. And we got a big game on Friday with Cake Auction, and you got a tough opponent. Just keep playing to get better. That's all you can do. Yeah, every rep counts. I mean, and that's I, absolutely, thing. and I'm sure, that, and I know the coaches, they're coaching hard. They're coaching every every possession here. Big three-pointer, Braden Hufford. That's his fourth of the night. First National Bank of Muscatine. Another three-pointer. I was watching over the weekend the Tom and Terry Brands documentary on the Big Ten Network, the two wrestlers and now wrestling coaches at Iowa. One of the things that was said is, one of the philosophies of their program is that if you don't get that, that's a good defensive possession there for the Muskies. If you don't get that first goal, if you're, if you're not able to come to that, get the next best thing. You know, always be working for the next best thing because then you can build off of that. And that's what the Muskies are trying to do here tonight. That, that's a great philosophy, Joel. God, I should have learned more from wrestling coaches. Oh, I, you, I, it's worth going back. And no, forth, honestly, I, I love listening to any coach of yeah. any sport, and I always – you can always take things away and adapt them for your sport, right. but that's a great philosophy. And I, I admire coaches of everything. Don't know much about wrestling, I have to be honest, but I know it's a tough sport, and those kids are in tremendous athletic shape. Nice block shot by Mark Holloway there. I don't think I'm tough enough to be a wrestler, oh, I, Joel. I know, you, I know that. I know I'm not. So, And those guys work so hard, and just the conditioning they go through, oh, my God, it's just a war. It was fun watching that document. My wife is actually from Sheldon, Iowa, which is where the Brands brothers are from. So her old high school was in the in the film. Great wrestling state. Those are great coaches. University of Iowa, great wrestling program. Lots of great collegiate programs in multiple sports. Absolutely. Your Drake Bulldogs doing some damage they on are. the hardwood this year. They're DeVries has year. his boys going. Yes. I'm going uh, next Saturday, alumni, alumni night. Nice. Drake versus you and I. Well, that'll be a fun one. Fortunately for me, there is no alumni game. <laughs> the last time I played in that, I tore my Achilles heel. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful there's no game yes. due to COVID. It's yeah. just, just the, the big guys are playing, the good guys. Time to be retired from those yeah, sorts that, of things. That, yeah, absolutely. Muscatine with another solid defensive possession. They take over. The lead is now 20. As Melendez will bring it up for the Muskies. Both. Well, now here's Workman brings it up. Melendez pokes it out. And now Diamond Crahey loses control. Wieskamp there. And Wieskamp finishes with the left hand. Very nice job of Luke sticking with it there. Very nice left hand. Looks like Miles has shook up a yeah, little, a little bit. Uh, officials timeout. Yeah, it looks like he might have got hit in the face or the jaw. Yeah, and that scramble. Well, I tell you what, that was kind of a scrum there, Joe. Yeah. There were about three or four reaches, I thought, both teams. and <laughs> They let him play on. Yep, Luke, Luke did a nice job finishing with the left hand down this end in front of us. And now number 31, Caden Doman in for the Wildcats, along with Isaac Tot Balden. This is Doman. Works it back to Hinton. Hinton to Franklin. Job by Diamond cutting off the baseline drive. Todd Balden misses. Workman save attempt intercept. Nice ball movement. Crahey unable to get the finish. Melendez just, showing that vision. Diamond just got himself caught a little bit too far under the hoop. The jump ball, and it'll stay here with the Wildcats. Just under five minutes to go in the fourth quarter. 
yeah, that you'll go to that UNI Drake game. What a luxury for those two programs to have two of the best high school players in the state, and Green and DeVries both have fathers who are coaching yes. on those respective teams. Yes. I'm just year in year in and year out. I'm so impressed with the high school talent in the state of Iowa. There's some great players. It's been that way for a long time. It has. You know, going all the way back to you know, you Troy know, Skinner in the Palmer, yes. Palmer, Palmer days. Yes. You know, I admire Coach Marquez Davis. He's still very calm and cool. He's got a lot of subs in the game. Yep. You know, Muscatine's making a little mini run here, and he's just kind of stayed with his guys. I know my, my assistant coaches when I was coaching would have said, Coach, get the starters back in. <laughs> They'd have been on me. And I was always nervous as a coach, too, if you sub too early. It's... It's one of those things. It's down to 14, Joe. We still got four minutes to go. Okay, he's got uh, a timeout. Time I think he's going to talk a little bit here, settle him down. And tell you what, if it gets down to 10, Joel, you almost have to suck. Oh, That's a yeah. lot of time. Yep, there's four minutes to go here. Muscatine, you know, slowly eroding this lead. You mentioned it's a 14-point lead now. He must feel very confident that at any point he can kind of get his starters back in there and right the ship a little bit, I guess. Well, but, and plus you're, you're rewarding these guys who absolutely. are so yeah, important I, to the program, getting, keep getting them some meaningful minutes, playing against some higher-level competition from the opponent. They have to get tired of – I've oh, been a scout team guy. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's hard. And I admire them for <laughs> doing it. Like work. I say, I just was so paranoid as a coach. I was – there's too much time. I was always <laughs> thinking they got a 20-point play somewhere in their repertoire, Joel, and they were going to come back on us. You know, and momentum sometimes is a tough thing, though. Once it swings yeah. one way, yep. sometimes it's hard to get back. And when you get that lead under 10, we've seen Muscatine come back from 14-point yes. deficits. Yes. You know, the Clinton game, they were down yep. 14 in the second half. Yep, now, back. I understand Clinton and North yeah. are not the same caliber teams, but they came back and won yep. that game. I think down nine in the fourth quarter. So, you know, if you're Muscatine right now, you're talking in that timeout. Let's see if we can get this thing under 10 and see, yep. what, see what happens. Because, like you said, if you can swing the momentum... He's, and he's staying with his, his, yep. his reserves. So, if you're Muscatine, keep, keep turning it on. See if you can cut into this. Get it under 10. I think we're going to see. You know, I love the sportsmanship Luke just yep. displayed there. You know, he's playing hard, tried to get a deflection there, steal. Didn't, knock, you know, bumped into the kid, knocked him over, but first quickly helped him up. Yep. That's great to see. You don't often see that today yeah. in today's game. At any level. Melendez battling. And Melendez gets the steal. And now we have a whistle. I don't know what. Great play steal. Is going. I think it's foul on 31. I think Miles had control of the ball there. So I think it's a good call. So Caden Doman's going to pick up his first foul. I'm, I'm, I wish I could read Coach's mind right now, Coach Davis. He's, he's thinking about it. He's camp. Catches the inbound. And as you said, Joel, I, I respect these guys. They're playing hard. They practice hard every day, the North kids, and they're giving it their all. That was a big miss. Elijah Hinton defended by Hufford. Hufford pokes it away. Double dribble called. And that'll be another turnover, and the Muskies will regain control. Coach Davis is pleading his case now, but as Coach Torelli found out, it's pretty tough. Yeah. Tough well, to your your pleas usually fall on deaf ears, Joel. <laughs> but you got to state your case, yeah. as as you indicated. Jumper no good by Wieskamp. Long offensive rebound by Diamond Crahey. Wieskamp left alone, misses the three. Dolman with the board. Now oh, Melendez and Embert think about a trap. Dolman finds Hinton. Three minutes to go here. Still a 14-point lead. I think Norris just trying to run a little clock here, it looks like. Maybe a foul. One thing, too, look at the North bench right now. 14-point lead, and you see the starters all engaged in what their teammates are doing on the floor. And, and that is something that, as a former coach, I love to see. And when you re recruit players, those are the things you look for when you're at a game. Do they care about their teammates? And they do. They're excited for that bucket. You know, it's great you make that point. I had a kid in our, our game last night at Bettendorf. 
he doesn't play in the A game at all, but he was the first guy from the end of the bench to be there during the timeout, yep. listening to what's going on. And I, Levi Boots is his name, and I told him I was so impressed with that. He's a great kid, doing a great job for us at the eighth grade level. Grandfather, Levi's grandfather was Kurt Warner's high school football coach. Are you kidding me? Yep. yep. That's tremendous. No, Levi is a great kid. Yep. Student over at St. Mary Matthias. Yep, he's, a, he's a family friend of ours. Oh, man, I was so impressed with him. I told him that last night. I told him again today how much that meant to me because most of the kids didn't get up and listen to the timeout. Yep. And you always are trying to learn, as, as we both talk about all the time, Joel. Sam Ember, great cut off of the screen. Muscatine showing a lot of proficiency on their under-the-basket, out-of-bounds play. Love that curl action. And the inbound did a great job finding him. That's the second part of that equation. That's going to be a foul okay. on Emmert. Four team fouls, or that's five team fouls now on the Muskies. Three fouls on Emmert. Actually, it is just four. Man, they're quick on those team fouls tonight on the scoreboard. Here's Workman. Here's Doman for three. No good. Bettis gets the rebound. And he's going to draw the foul. You know, we're from Muscatine, Joel, but you find yourself. You're rooting for, rooting for that kid, too. Oh, yeah. He's a kid who you know, you know me and the world, too. Right. And got yeah. a good look there. And a part of me was like, oh, you know, <laughs> I wish I would have went in for the kid. You know, I mean, uh, you just like to see kids, yeah. kids have success wherever Absolutely. they're from. You know, and especially when you know they put their heart and soul into it, as you indicated. They work hard. Emmert. Going to get two shots here. Sam Emmert, again, going hard to the rim. That's a big takeaway I'm seeing tonight is Sam is taking that part of his game to a different level tonight. He's attacking, attacking, attacking the rim. Yeah, He's it's good to, six points. good to see him get to the free throw line. The I don't think we've shot many free throws this second no, half, Joel, and no. really even for the game. Seven points now for Emmert. The Muskie sophomores had a big win in the in the curtain raiser. And Connor Christensen set to check in. He's coming in for Emmert. The senior Connor Christensen checks in. The lead is 12. Melendez full court on Dolman here. It's fun watching these these soccer players defend. They they're so good at positioning. Great Hufford. Yeah, he gets the lay in on the great pass from Melendez yeah. off the steal. Melendez has great feet. God, he really does. Hufford unable to get the steal. Joe, we got it to ten. Joe still got a minute twenty three. Coach Davis has not flinched over there. I can't. I, he's a he's a cooler customer than me, Joe. I don't want to play I'd poker be, with Coach I'd, Davis. I'd, I'd, <laughs> oh, I'd have folded on to Joel several times. Timeout North. Okay, Coach is going to talk about it a little bit. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll take a short I'm break. I'm telling too. you, I've seen stranger things happen. We are looking for a zero-turn lawnmower. At Hustler Turf, quality matters. Can I test drive that one? In the store? <laughs> Even in the buying experience, we know you want to buy from someone who knows what they're talking about. We're looking for a zero-turn mower. Like Great. this guy. Uh, first thing you need to know is what's the size of your property? Uh, are there any obstacles? Head to your local Hustler dealer and talk to a lawnmower expert. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. You know Rivo as expert plumbers, but did you know Rivo can also be your one source for complete bathroom and kitchen remodels? With professional craftsmen doing the job for more than 30 years, experienced in tile, carpentry, and of course plumbing, Rivo can transform a dreary basement into an elegant bathroom and upgrade a worn out kitchen using inspirational design and quality brands. Before you stand in line at a big box store, call Rivo Incorporated and see how a hometown professional can refresh and improve your home. And welcome back. A minute 23 to go here in the fourth quarter. The Muskies have cut this lead to 10. On the floor for Muscatine, Hufford, Emmert, Melendez, Connor Christensen, and Luke Wieskamp. 
As the Wildcats break the pressure, Hinton finds Franklin in the corner. Franklin hits the big three. That one may shut the door, Joe. Yep. Dennison Franklin, his second three of the night. We've seen a couple of substitutions out of the timeout as Wright and Dennison came back in. Or Franklin, excuse me. Hufford for three. And that's good. A three-pointer from First National Bank of Muscatine. His Braden. 16 points tonight. Braden opens the door back up again. Gives us a little last gasp of life. Franklin for three. Workman getting the offensive rebound on the pullback. He is a big physical forward. Emmert misses the lay-in. Workman gets the re rebound. Hinton. Hinton's going to get to the free throw line. I think the officials got somewhere to be after the game, Joe. Maybe they got reservations. Yeah. <laughs> I think they're they're ready, to, ready to call it a night. 12-point lead now. That's the third foul on Melendez as Hinton will go to the free throw line to shoot two. They can't tee us up up here, can they, Joe? No. Okay. Nope. And we're not saying anything bad. No. These, we, I, I, I actually I have, it was North got fouled. Yeah, I have, <laughs> that's right. I have the utmost respect for, for officials. I really do. Melendez battling for that rebound. It's just going to go out of bounds. Stay tuned for our high V of Muscatine and Wahlberger's postgame show as we will have our offensive and defensive players of the game. This, this team for North, you know, you see teams, this could be a scary team come postseason play because there's a lot of tools at work here for Coach Davis. Yeah, they've really had a nice season. Um, PV's obviously in the driver's seat. You know, North has two conference losses. Right. I don't know if PV's going to be, get beat twice yet, but you never know. But you just think about you get to the postseason and you get a team that's hot. Absolutely. Like, like what North And they played be. PV tough, yeah. you know, so, no, I, you know. And depending on where you end up in the bracket, I mean, that could be the game to go to state. Yeah, not, and not, right, 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 and then anything could happen. Right. You, you get down to one game, you're exactly right, Joel. So, Tell you, Coach Davis is a cool customer. He he did not waver there one bit. I watched him the whole time, and he didn't panic. He just he seemed like he was out for a Sunday stuck. stroll. He knew he knew he, he had a yeah. plan. He and I tell you, him. I give him a lot of credit because I could not have been that cool as a coach. I would have lost my mind during that stretch, Joel. We're gonna take a short break, and we'll be back to put a bow on this one. It's Muskies lose 59-46 to Davenport North. At Hustler Turf, quality matters, especially when it comes to the driving experience. Let's take a closer look. Our legendary smooth track steering provides buttery smooth turns, making maneuvering around obstacles a breeze. Unlike the jerky feel of other options, our smooth track steering is so effortless, anyone could make short work of the lawn. Hustler Turf, mow like a pro. Stop in to Muscatine Lawn and Power at 2020 Stewart Road to see Hustler quality for yourself. At First National Bank, we strive to provide the best customer service both in person and online. Our mobile wallet offers you great features within our mobile app. Car controls, alerts, digital receipts. Mobile wallet is a free feature in our mobile app. Check it out today. Getting meals to go from Hy-Vee is even easier with the new Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go website and curbside pickup. Just order online at hyvee.com forward slash mealtime. Feed your family for less and order Hy-Vee Mealtime to Go today. At Pearl City Media, we develop custom marketing solutions for businesses of all kinds. Between radio, cable TV, newspaper, Facebook, Google, and YouTube ads, it can be tough to make sure your business is seen and understood by the right people. Pearl City Media understands that people are everywhere, and reaching the right kind of people for your business isn't so simple. Maybe you want to increase your business's awareness and sell more inventory, or maybe you want to book more appointments. Or maybe you need a bump in your lunchtime traffic. Whatever your goals are, Pearl City Media will listen and create a strategic campaign focused on helping you reach those goals. We handle all the strategy, planning, execution, and we'll update you on the results of the campaign while constantly evaluating the effectiveness of your campaign. So what are you waiting for? Send Pearl City Media a message and start improving your marketing today. 
And welcome back. It's the Hy-Vee and Wahlburgers postgame show here on the Discover Muscatine Sports Network. Tough loss. The Muskies fall by 13 to Davenport North. North moves to 11-4 and four on the season, 10-2 and two in the conference. And the Muskies move to 1-14 and 14 overall and 1-12 and 12 in the conference. Some really positive things, though, for, the, for this Muskie team. One of those things was the shooting starting to heat up a little bit, and our affordable metal manufacturing offensive player of the game, Braden Huffer, 19 points, 4 of 7 from 3 tonight. Yeah, he picked it up a little bit, you know. and uh, 5 with, of 8 from 3. Without Dante in the lineup, I'm sure he felt he had to be a little more productive offensively, but uh, he did a nice job there, and like you said, he heated up, especially in that second half. Luke Wieskamp close at his heels with 16 points, but the second half, really, the lead started to – Come back, Muscatine starting to get some steals, led with the defensive player of the game presented by Eastern Iowa Power Washers, Miles Melendez, our defensive player of the game. I wish I had quick feet like Miles. <laughs> if I had his quickness, I could have probably played 10 more years. He does a great job moving his feet, position defense. Uh, really love to see that out of a kid. Miles Melendez, our Eastern Iowa Power Washers defensive player of the game. That's going to do it for us tonight. Again, to stay tuned. Friday night, the three-headed monster, Bob Long, Joel Krausar, Terry Youngbauer, as we do the boy-girl doubleheader. It's cake auction night, the biggest fundraiser of the year for the MHS Booster Club. If you can't be here, don't worry. You can still contribute to that MHS Booster Club as they have a Venmo account, so you can sit at home nice and cozy. It's going to be like minus four maybe on Friday night. Nice and cozy, watch the game, and still help contribute as we try to raise funds for all of our booster-sponsored programs at the high school. Coach Long, if you're listening, get well. <laughs> we appreciate it, and we appreciate you. Tune in as the Central DeWitt Sabres come to town. Tell you what, folks, two of the better teams in the conference, boys and girls. Uh, Central DeWitt, two Division I players on their girls' roster, returning Mississippi Athletic Conference Player of the Year in Beach, and then one of the bigger teams you're going to see, uh, Central DeWitt boys team. They have a 6'8", 270-pound uh, center who I believe is going to Iowa State to play football next year. And just going to be a fun game to call. And it's a night at the movies, so you never know what special maybe movie trivia we'll have or something throughout the game. But we'll, be, we'll tune in, see what we have available, and just check out all the cakes. We'll have a cake cam maybe. Who knows what we have in store on the Discover Muscatine Sports the Network. possibilities are endless, Absolutely. Joel. Good night, everybody. <laughs>